Oh, Father God, that we keep our mind on, stayed on you tonight, Father God. Father God, we don't want to forget about you, Father God, mm -hmm. for the work that you've done there. Father, you, you called us, Father God, to salvation tonight. We thank you for that, Father God. Just bless us. Be with us. Keep your people, Father God. Keep their mind. Protect those insurance, Lord Jesus. Bless those that are sick tonight, Lord Jesus. Strengthen them, Father God. Oh, Somebody yes, tonight, yes. Father God, that, that don't know what way to turn. The Father don't know where to look to. Father God, we pray that you, they, that you induce you to your, them, Lord Jesus, that, that, that knowing that you is able tonight, Father God. Use our keepers. Oh, bless all the land. Bless this nation. Father God, I pray for peace tonight, Father God. In your yes, name, yes. Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, Minister Wesley. Um, thank God for <laughs> him coming out and sharing us with prayer. I believe as uh, Sister Chelsea Mapson is on. Sister Chelsea, are you ready? Yes, sir, Bishop. How you doing? Doing very well, my dear. Thank you so much for Thanks. consenting to be the um, soloist tonight. Saints, Absolutely. this young lady can sing. Amen. Amen. So uh, there I'm she is. Honored. Hello, Amen. family. I'm so glad I can't see everybody's faces, but I'm glad to hear all voices. I'm glad to know that we're fellowshipping together. Yes. Um, long time since I've been amongst the saints with this coronavirus and all this kind of good stuff. So I'm so glad and my heart is warm to be here. I'm honored. And so um, I'm just going to sing this song and get out the way. I'm looking forward to the service. And I'm Take your that time. I'm Take your time. Don't rush nothing. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to just do what I can for y'all. Y'all bear with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just right Amen. where you are in your home. Can you give the Lord some worship and some praise? Just manifest his glory. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. And we honor Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Oh, we honor God. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Lord. Everybody need the Lord. Everybody need the Lord. Hallelujah. I need thee like the ocean needs the water. Or run dry. I need thee like the many stars above, needs the setting of the sky. I need thee like the hours of tomorrow need today to pass by. Lord, I need thee more than ever, Lord. So please hear my humble cry. I need the old. I, I need thee. That's so. Hey, every hour, Lord, I need thee. Oh, bless. bless me, bless me, bless me now, my Savior. I I come to, Lord, I come to thee. I need thee in the morning when from evening's rest I wake. Yes, Lord, I need you to direct my path every step I take. I need you, Lord, to keep me. I need your mercy and your grace. Lord, I need thee more than ever, Lord. For your promise never to forsake. Lord, I need, I need thee. Oh. Anybody need the Lord up to that? Lord, we need thee. Lord, we need thee. Lord, we need thee. Oh, bless, 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 bless me now, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, oh bless. Bless me now, my Savior, I come, I come to, I come to thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, bless. Oh, bless. Oh, bless. Oh, you, yes, 
Come yes, on. yes, yes, yes. Want to tell you that Lord, we love you more than anything. Can we tell the Lord that we love Him right where we are? Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Oh, we worship and we worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, that we love you more than anything. Oh, yes, Lord, that we love you more than anything. Can I say that one more time? Yeah, that Lord, we love. Hallelujah. Can we worship the Lord right where you are? Hallelujah, Lord. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Hallelujah. Bishop, it's on you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, glory. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank God for Sister Chelsea. I just want to take a moment and uh, thank, again, thank God for Sister Chelsea. But just to connect the dots, Sister Chelsea, do you mind telling the saints who your parents are? I don't mind, Apostle. My parents are um, Bishop uh, Simon Peter Mapson and Elect Lady Laverne Mapson. Those are my parents. Hey, man. I just <laughs> wanted to do that because um, uh, the saints here know Bishop Peter Mapson and, uh, and, and, and most of them know your mother. And last night, there was her aunt that was singing. Uh, that was her father's um, sister that sung for us last night. So we, uh, that was her Aunt Julia. So thank yes. you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, so yes, I, 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 I trust you. All right, I thought you would stay with us if you can. Yes, but sir. We, we love you. Now, um, tonight we are so blessed. And I said it earlier, I just want to reiterate, we are so blessed to have with us the Bishop Michael Smith of Baltimore, Maryland. He's the pastor of New Bethel House of Prayer. Um, <coughs> excuse me, on last evening, a, a preacher I also sung. Now, I don't know whether Bishop Smith is going to sing. Or not. <laughs> I don't know whether Bishop Smith is going to sing or not. But um, actually, we're going to give you now. And Bishop, let me just say this before you get started. The time is unlimited. Do what God gave you to do. We don't have any time restraints. So whatever God has given you, uh, we're going to ask you to do that. Saints, just get with him and just enjoy the Lord with him. At this time, we give you give to you and uh, introduce to some, present to others, the Bishop Michael Smith, Baltimore, Maryland. Praise the Lord, Bishop. Praise the Lord, Church. We are glad uh, to be with you all this <laughs> evening. Uh, for this feast of, uh, or during the Feast of Tabernacles. <clears throat> we honor the Lord tonight for his goodness, his kindness, his mercy. We thank him for who he is, what he's done, and all that he continues to do. Um, again, we thank God for your fine pastor, Apostle James Raglan. We thank God for uh, First Lady Raglan, Jane Raglan, and uh, to the Corman ministers who have joined us on the call, as well as to the uh, members, saints, and friends. It is a blessing to be uh, with you all. We're going to jump right into the text uh, on tonight. We trust that you'll be blessed. Please uh, pray for us and with us uh, as we delve into the word of God uh, on tonight. Um, our, this, this evening's uh, pericope will be coming from John chapter 7, uh, in particular verses 1 and 2, uh, with, with uh, extra emphasis on not being long at all tonight. We just want to share a few things uh, that God has given to us to lift from the text on this evening. John chapter 7, uh, verses 1 and 2, beginning... Um, Yes, at verse one, of course, and uh, reading from the King James Version of Scripture uh, on tonight. Verse one says, after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, uh, because the Jews sought to kill him now. Verse two, now the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles was uh, at hand. John chapter seven, verses one and two. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, 
We come to you as humbly as we know how, once again, asking that you would bless this time, bless this hour, bless this moment, bless this minute that we have together. Every second, Lord Jesus, Father, we have come to know, God, that if we're doing and attempting anything without you, God, it is uh, pointless, Father. And so we bless you tonight. We ask that you would sit Michael down and you stand up, Holy Spirit, and do what only you can do. Touch the hearts and minds of your people, God, listeners everywhere, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. And we're encouraged tonight, God, because you had other options, but you chose us and we bless you for that God. Father, we thank you for knowing that the word never goes out and comes back without accompli without accomplishing that which you have sent it to do. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray and we bless you in advance for what you've already done, which will be manifested in our lives beginning tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we prepare uh, church to delve into the scriptures, we see um, in verse one, again, I want to read it again. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee for he would not walk in Jewry. And as the Bible lets us know here also, uh, because the Jews sought to kill him. Verse two, now the feast, the Jews feast of tabernacles was at hand. As we look at the text on tonight, we see John is summarizing, uh, if you will, events that occurred uh, during the six month period from around about April up until October. And Jesus uh, pretty much has already in John chapter six, he's already fed the 5,000, if you will. And he's done it with the five barley loaves, as well as with the, uh, the two fish. And what he shows us in the text as we move forward uh, towards our pericope for tonight is that he can break limitations. Somebody ought to thank him tonight for breaking limitations. Uh, we see that, that Jesus blesses it and he distributes it. And so that means that little becomes much when we place it in the master's hand. Y'all don't, y'all bear with me as I make my own self happy, preach my own self happy tonight. God is good. Uh, then the next thing that we see is that Jesus walks on water. He defies all the laws of science. And that's why I love him because with him, there's just no telling what he will do as old folks will say there's no secret what God can do uh, what he's done for others he will do for you and so as I read the scriptures it encourages me as I go through whatever it is that I'm going through in my life it lets me know that if God has done it then he can do it now praise God next we see where Jesus explains and this is where it becomes a little challenging Jesus explains that he is the bread of heaven as well as the bread of life uh, Jesus is the way he's the truth he's the life he lets them know that yes while you might marvel at the manna that I allowed to be fed uh, during Moses' time I rain down from heaven. He says, that's nothing compared to if you eat of me and if you drink of me. Now, you got to come to understand that that, uh, as we're reading uh, after the fact, and we're Monday morning, Monday night quarterbacking, if you will, uh, for those of us, if your pastor, as much as you love him, starts talking about if you eat of me and drink of me, or eat my flesh and drink my blood, I'm sure most of you want to leave that church. I would not be mad at you, praise the Lord, because that's some strange talk right there. And so Jesus is testing the disciples to see and testing the followers to see, you know, you know, who really is there because of what he's doing versus who really is there because they're trying to get an understanding. And by the way, tonight, I, I love the word. The, the Bible says this in all of our getting to get an understanding. People come to church for a lot of things. And I'm convinced that one of the reasons why God allowed or permitted COVID-19 to come to place is to check us spiritually. I have found that uh, there are a lot of people who go to church and they're in love with the church, but they're not in love with God. Uh, because last time I checked, we are the body of Christ. And so if I'm in Walmart, the church is in Walmart. If I'm in my car, the church is in my car. If I'm at work, the church is where I am at work. Talk to me, somebody, where there are two or three that are gathered together, because what happens if we cannot get to those four walls? God wants us to remember that you are the church, and watch this, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's what the text says to us tonight, and so as we plow and we push forward, as the curtain begins to lift just a little bit, we see here Jesus is rejected by his own. The disciples have walked away from Christ because they don't understand understand his message, what he just said. And so uh, the followers, if you want, so several of the disciples do stay. And he says, pretty much, he asked them, are you going to go also? And then there's one who responds and says, no, Lord, we're not going to go. You you know the way, you are the way. And so we thank him for, for that. And so the curtain begins to lift on John chapter seven. And this is where it begins to get really good. We see three things that happen in the text, which I'm not going to preach tonight. I think I'm going to preach on Wednesday, but I want to just share it with you to help you to delve into the text further. John seven. And we selected that because that's one of the places we see in the New Testament, Jesus Christ in the feast. And so point number one that I preach later is the ridicule of our Savior. We see that. We also see the reaction of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, and then we also reaction to him, shall I say. And then point number three, we see the response.
response of our Savior. And that's the entire chapter, if you will. And we'll get into that probably Wednesday because that's when we get kind of talk about like almost the middle of the feast. But for right now, since we're kind of still at the beginning, if you will, it started Friday night into Sabbath day. And so we're here we are on Monday evening. And I want you to see that there's some awesome things that I don't want you to miss this in the text. It's in verses one and two. I know it looks like it's not much, but trust me tonight, it's packed. Watch this. The Feast of Tabernacles, which is celebrated, as we shared, at the end of September or sometimes around about the beginning of October, where we are tonight, is a Thanksgiving festival. And so that's a time for us to thank God. That's a time for us to spread the table for what many people do later on in November. Guess what? God's will, according to the scriptures, is for us to thank him during this festival. And so it is customary to have the table spread. I'm going to bless somebody right here. It is customary to come off your diets and eat what you want to eat. It is customary to go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet. That is a custom. Mary. That's God's will for your life. Yes, I know most of you are trying to socially distance yourself from the refrigerator, but it is God's will during this season that you enjoy yourself. Praise the Lord. Put the nice spread out, put out the nice silverware, all those things. Get, get together around with family. But in doing all of that, remember that it was God who made the way. It was God who delivered you. It was God who set you free and it was God who brought you out. That's a good place to bless him right there. Go on and put something in the chat. Talk bishop, preach bishop, something like that. You're talking to me and I'll keep right on going. So watch as we see Tabernacle is a time of celebration. It's a time of thanksgiving. It also commemorates, now watch this, the God, divine guidance granted to Israel during the nation's wandering in the wilderness. I love that. Yes, let me say that one more time. It is also, uh, it commemorates the divine guidance granted to Israel during the nation's wandering in the wilderness. Yes, Lord. During the festival, the people erect and dwell in temporary shelters made of palm and other trees. Watch this. However, now watch this now because we always get, uh, get excited about about that and all of what's in it for us, but I want to talk to somebody tonight who may not necessarily feel uh, quite uh, uh, like celebrating on tonight. Every now and then you go through some hardships. And so the sermon, the topic of tonight's sermon is tension in tabernacles. Yes, tension in tabernacles. Watch this. Now we're going to put a nice little spin on it. Tension in tabernacles. So watch this. However, even though we are supposed to be celebrating, right, and it's a time for us to marvel over the fact and rejoice over the fact that God has brought in, uh, allowed us to bring in all the fruit of our labor, and he's blessed everything that we put our hands to according to De Deuteronomy 16 and Leviticus 23, and the list goes on and on. God has blessed us, but look at what's happening to Jesus. However, Jesus is experiencing something quite different. And so the question tonight that I hope to answer for you is, what do you do when what you are seeing does not match up with what God told you. God, that's good. Yes. What do you do when what you are seeing does not match up with what God told you? Yes, I know it's a time of celebration. Yes, I know it's a time of reflection. We sit under the booth to look up at the sky to remember that as we were traveling from point A to point B, God was always showing up. Yes, during that time, he always made sure that we ate. During that time, he always made sure we were provided for. But what happens when you see tension there? What Jesus is dealing with during that time is watch this disbelief and division amongst the church. Yes, disbelief and division, even amongst those who are not necessarily church members. And so it's a difficult time for him, which leads me in my remaining 17 minutes to point one. What I want you to pay attention to is watch this now. Jesus parades himself in Galilee. Yes, that's point number one. He parades himself. And why do I say parades? King James Version says, after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. Don't miss that point right there. Galilee was known for its political unrest, its banditry, and also tax revolts. Sounds to me like the Feast of Tabernacles occurred during the time for which, watch this now, uh, we're living in right now where there's racial injustice. Talk to me, somebody. Jews and Gentiles can't stand each other during that time. That's not foreign to us. Come on. Watch this now. Moving on, we see economic uncertainty during these times. We see crisis, and we see leadership by a president. Watch this, who expects for you to pay taxes, but he don't want to pay ta taxes. Talk to me, somebody. Let me back up off that thing real quick. Yes. And so the same kind of stuff that they were having going on back then, we still have going on right now. And I'm here to tell you that we have survived over 2000 years since the text was written. And guess what? The same way God had made what made a way back then. He guess what? He's making a way for his people right now. Come a little closer as we jaywalk through the scripture. Watch this. The Bible lets us know that as we go through things in our lives, the, listen, the psalmist said this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So pay attention to this. This is good. When when Jesus goes 
goes through stuff, church. He does not start running. He doesn't start screaming and hollering. He doesn't lose his mind, if you will. He's cool, calm, and collective. He walks, and he already knows. We just read it. They, or he knows that they want to kill him, but he takes his time and walks through Galilee. Come on, somebody. It, have you ever had your back up against the wall, and everybody thinks that you should be losing your mind, and you are calm, cool, and collective? You can't even explain why you are feeling the way that you do when you should be nervous, you should be shaking, you should be worried, but you know it's the Holy Spirit that's in you that has calmed you and said, chill, my son, I got you. This ain't our first rodeo. Come on. How many of y'all know that without God, you couldn't do it, but with God, come on, you ought to just encourage yourself and say, God and I can handle anything. Yes. Come on. Come on and say it. God and I can handle anything anything. Yet Jesus is walking through the text. He never runs. He never becomes unhinged. He is not worried. He takes his time and he remains calm, even though he knows that they want to kill him. That's point number one. So I want to encourage you tonight as you go through this festival, know this much. God's desire is for you to walk because he's the one who allows you to walk in the valley of the shadow. It teaches us some things. God, that's good. Just like he did the children of Israel when this feast was being birthed. It was him who ordained for them to go the route that they went because Jesus was working with them. He knew what was in their heart. He knew what many of them would do. They would turn and go back home because the, the route that, you know, the shortest route, if you will, was for them to go past the Philistine garrisons, Philistine post, and uh, also the Egyptian post. And God knew as soon as they saw that, some of them were going to be fearful and take their behinds right back to, to slavery. Watch this now. But it's God's will that we understand up front what he wants us to do is to rest in him. Talk to me, somebody. Yes, watch. Just not keep the Sabbath, but I'm talking about truly rest in him every day where we trust God enough to know he's going to make a way. So point number one, we, he just parades himself in Galilee. I want you to do that. You might be having trouble at home. You might be having trouble at work, but every now and then you just got to come and let them know it's not bothering me. Praise the Lord. The God that I serve, I don't know what he's up to, but he's whipping up something. Come on, talk to me. Somebody, he got something in that kitchen that's getting ready to come out and it smells good. Come on. And Lord, have mercy. Matter of fact, you ought to celebrate right there and say, I see me in my future and I look much better than I look right now. God, that's good. Tension. Tension, tension in the text. And so we move on to point number two. We're still in verses one and two of John chapter seven. Point number two is we see God's provision. That's what Jesus sees. He sees God's provision. Watch this. Notice Jesus cannot walk amongst his own people. They do not understand his earthly assignment. They want to kill him because he speaks in a manner for which they have never heard before. We know the world is mad at him because he's challenging the status quo. The church is, by the way, as well, too. They hate him because he is, here's the point, he exposes their sin. Sometimes, there are many of us who have an anointing upon us where, watch this now, have you ever had a, a, a problem at work? I have, even in my neighborhood, where sometimes people just don't like you. You don't know why they don't like you. You're trying to figure out why they don't like you. Can I let you in on a secret? Don't waste any more time. Sometimes, it's the fact that you are just anointed by God and the light that you bring, the illumination that comes along with you. Come on. The shift in the atmosphere that takes place when you show up, they can't stand it because the brighter the light, the thicker the darkness surrounding it. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody say, Smith, you just helped me out right there. Yes. I can't help it that I'm blessed. I can't help it that I'm anointed. I can't help it that I'm chosen by God. So let your light so shine before everybody that they may see your good works, but give glory to the father. Somebody calm down, Smith. Let me get myself together. So he parades himself through Galilee. Point number one. Number two, provision. We see Jesus is always making a way for his people. And I know just like Jesus, somebody's on this Zoom call tonight. Uh, uh, watch this now. And you're going through tough times in your life. Your job may be on the line because of COVID-19. Uh, homeschooling is very challenging. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. The elections are coming. If you're confused, you don't know who to vote for. I know. I know it's got to be frustrating. And there's tension during tabernacles. Yes, I already know that if you vote for the Democrats, somebody's going to say that you're voting for the LGBT community. Somebody else is going to say that you're voting for abortion. If you vote for the Republicans, somebody's going to say, sure enough, God don't stand for racism. Come on. So I can tell you're confused, but come on, somebody. I believe with all my heart that if we pray, what, what did he say in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14? If my people who are called by, calm down, Smith, Lord, have mercy. This is good. All right. He walks, right? And then after he walks, we see provision that's there for God's people. I got news for you. Your blessing during this season, watch this now, is going to come from unfamiliar places. Places. That's good. I got to hurry up and run. It's going to come from unfamiliar places. What do you mean by that, Smith? Notice how God has to hide Jesus amongst the Gentiles. That's what Drew, uh, 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 Galilee is. The Gentiles. God's got to hide Jesus amongst the Gentiles. So I'm here to tell you that everybody that doesn't do what you do, that's not your enemy. 
Everybody that doesn't understand what you're doing, that's not your enemy. Watch that. Let me, let, me, let me give you some scriptures so you don't think I made this up. We see that the Lord sent a raven, to, a filthy, stinking, unclean bird, a raven to, ravens, plural, to feed Elijah. We also see that, watch this, in Acts chapter 10, when the Lord was dealing with Peter and Cornelius, God sent a Gentile. Come on, somebody. He was a praying man, but he was a Gentile. And watch this. You just never know who your blessing may be, whose hand it may be, and who God's going to use. So I'm telling you, during this season, don't turn your nose up at nobody, because just like Jesus had to hide amongst the Gentiles. You don't know who you're going to have to hide amongst. Talk to me, somebody. All I know is whatever God got for me, I want it. Talk to me, somebody. He's going to come in some unconventional ways. Expect for him to do that. The Lord will provide during this feast. So Jesus parades himself through Galilee. We see divine provision. Are you with me? And watch this. Look what the King David says. We try to sum this thing up. He said, I have never seen God, that's good. Can I unpack that, y'all? He said, I have never. I looked up never in the dictionary. That thing blessed me. Here's what never means. He says, at no time in the past or future, or on no un uh, occasion, not ever have I seen the righteous forsaken nor see bacon bread. Bacon bread. He said, at no time in the past nor the future. Come on, that's, that's God's way of saying, I got your back. Amen. So while I know we're celebrating at home, and I know we're celebrating during this pandemic, if you will, or pestilence as the Bible would refer to it as, look at, let me leave you with this. Look at what Exodus chapter eight and verse 22 says. It says, but on that day, I will deal differently with the land of Goshen where my people live. No swarms or flies will be there so that you will know that I, the Lord, am in the land. God, that's good. That's God's way of saying, watch this now. I, I wish I had time to deal with this. Wherever we are, what you see biblically happen is whenever God allows calamity, to strike the earth or punishment or judgment, he doesn't always remove his people. A lot of times he keeps us there, but he provides for us in the midst. That's good right there. So no matter what happens in the world, he got my back. He gonna take care of us, church. Think about this. When he hit, allowed fire to hit Sodom and Gomorrah, he took his people and he just removed them. They stayed in the earth, but he still provided for them. Amen, are you with me? I just want you to see, don't worry, chill, walk, take your time, slow down. That's what I love about the Cobham church. I have watched you all. That's why y'all live seem like forever because y'all are never in a rush. You just take your time and walk and take your time where you got to go. It's the city folk always rushing, running and carrying on. And that's why we die early. I'm learning to take my time and walk in Galilee. <laughs> see God's provision. And last but not least, who was it? Uh, Ty Trivet, the songwriter, said this. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God right now. Same God back then. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God right now. Same God back then. And point number three, Jesus receives God's protection. The Jews sought to kill him. But Jesus knew this. If God is for me, then who can be? Yes. You got it. Be encouraged, my brothers and my sisters. Watch this. And I hope you, 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 you receive this. God gave the circumstance instructions on how to treat Jesus. Hmm, that's good. God gave the circumstance instructions on how to treat you. Think about that. Nothing can happen to you except God allows. What you don't always know is what kind of conversations God is having up in the heavenlies about you. And I'm confident that there are times when he is just flat out bragging on you, my brother, my sister. Do me a favor. Don't disappoint him. Go through. Complete the process. Go through because God is with you. It's not sent to kill you, but it's sent to make you stronger. They sought to, to kill Jesus, but notice this. They could not kill him. And all that I got from just verses one and two of the text. My friend, you may be experiencing some tension during tabernacles, but rest assured, God's going to protect you. If you feel like you are losing everything, remember trees lose their leaves every year and they still stand tall and wait for better days to come. Yes, Lord. Watch this. We have to be like trees, as the Bible said in Psalm 1, planted by the rivers, rivers of water, which cannot be moved. In other words, what the Lord is saying, bend, but don't break. Come on, just bounce back. Praise the Lord right there. you got to stop thinking you'll be stuck in your situation forever. We feel like our heart will never heal or we feel like we'll never get out of this impossible struggle. But guess what? Do not confuse a season for a lifetime. Tabernacles is about this thing being temporary. Come on, somebody, and rejoice right there. And so as I prepare to close, Lord, have mercy. This has been good in terms of my time being spent with you all. I want to close with this short story. The early American Indians had a unique practice of training young braves. On the night of a boy's 13th birthday, after learning hunting, scouting, and fishing skills, he was put to one final test. He was placed in a dense forest to spend the entire night alone. 
Until then, he had never been away from the security of the family and the tribe. But on this night, he was blindfolded and taken several miles away. When he took off the blindfold, he was in the middle of a thick woods and he was terrified. Every time a twig snapped, he visualized a, a wild animal ready to pounce. After what seemed like an eternity, dawn broke and the first rays of sunlight entered the interior of the forest. Looking around, the boy saw flowers, trees, and the outline of the path. Then to his utter astonishment, he beheld the figure of a man standing just a few feet away, armed with a bow and arrow. It was his father. He had been there all night long. <laughs> So my brother, my sister, as you experience tension in tabernacles, no, you're not alone. Your father is standing right there. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. 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 We thank God for Bishop Smith. Bishop, you did not disappoint any of us. Amen. And for those that had never met you, we have um, people here in Cobham that don't know who you are. I know now they just anticipated when this thing is over, surely can we get this man to Cobham? We, we, we've known him ever since he was a teenager and we thank God for him and we, we honor the God in him, how God has brought him and has God has taken him through different things and placed him where he is tonight. Amen. We said thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, what we're going to do is this time, we're going to bring Bishop back that he will have the, um, well, just before we do that, Sister Brenda would give us a rundown. We made an, um, an addition to the weekend. We were going to end Thursday night, and now we're going to do, uh, end it actually Friday night. So Sister Brenda will give us a rundown as to who is on each night. Um, I remember when um, Deacon Preston had looked at the lineup. He said, boy, we got a good lineup, and we thank God, yes, we have, and we have not been disappointed at all. So, Saints, we're going to ask you to be, be with us every night. Sister Brenda, you ready? Oh, sorry, yes, I am. Um, the Lord's will tomorrow night is Apostle Stephen L. Best, and our soloist is St. Ruby Phillips. Our minister for prayer is Minister Esther Allen. On Thursday, uh, no, sorry, Wednesday night, is Bishop Quincy Slaughter. And our soloist is St. Tamara Knox. And our prayer leader is Deacon Kenny Allen. On Thursday night, our speaker is Bishop Jerry Carter. Our soloist is uh, Brother Jaden Arnold. And our prayer leader is Deacon Walter Preston. On Friday night, uh, our speaker is Evangelist Carly Taylor. And our soloist is Brother Tyler Hamner. And our prayer leader is Deacon Rodney Ragler. Amen. Thank you, Sister Brendan. Let me just say, well, she didn't say where these people are from, but they're from all over the country. They're from all over the United States. They come from, uh, as you know, Bishop Smith is in Baltimore, some of them in California and various places. So God just blessed her with this lineup this week of preachers and solos. And again, Sister Chelsea, we thank you for blessing us in song on this evening. What we're going to do at this time, and we're going to ask uh, Bishop Smith to come back and have the following words, dismiss us. And when I say dismiss, it's not a formal dismissal, but um, he has the following prayer and words. And, and after that, please, sir, please, ma'am, somebody said it last night, we're going to move into the social hall, simply saying that we're going to unmute ourselves and, and make sure we can be seen. Uh, if you're on video, of course, you're on the phone, you can listen in, but if you're on video uh, or you're on the Zoom video, then let everybody see you and we can just conversate and, and enjoy one another for a few minutes. God bless you, Bishop. Amen. Thank you once again, Apostle, for the opportunity to speak to the congregation. It has been a blessing. As always, anytime we get together, we thank God for the fellowship, the friendship we've had down through the years. Uh, thank him for just all the relationships that we have as well and connected to the church. Uh, I was just looking at some pictures earlier today with my dad and Apostle Raglan and the uh, list goes on and on, just the, the bond uh, down through the years. So I'm grateful to the Lord. Thank you for this uh, Tom, thank you for your vision, Apostle. If I may celebrate you for a moment tonight uh, to be able to do this. I know some people are um, challenged because um, 
uh, that we're being faced with celebrating the way that we are as a result of the, uh, the pandemic. But I am convinced that there are two things God is looking for from the church during this season, and that is innovation and creativity. He's given it to us, uh, and we just have to use it. So I'm grateful to the Lord for this opportunity. God bless each and every one of you. And again, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We're turning it back into the hands of Apostle that we may enter the fellowship hall. <laughs> Amen. Yes, just um, please make yourself visible and, and, <laughs> so and we, can, uh, <laughs> we can share um, in conversation just for a few minutes. Uh, I, you know, I was looking at Brother and Sister Jones. Brother 